From Hunter x Hunter to Supreme Will Chapter 1, Encounter with a Madman at the Beginning Moritonio, hurry up! We still need to prepare for the performance. He seems to still have some breath. In the northern part of the Ubian continent, located at the northeast corner of York New, on the way to the renowned pleasure capital, Glamgasrins. A young man lying on the ground, bleeding, caused the circus caravan to come to a halt. Neo, the leader of the troop, bent down, ignoring the protests of the members, and walked up to the young man to check his condition, young man. Can you still speak? We still have a distance to Glam, I heard the area nearby is quite chaotic, could this kid have been attacked by bandits or mountain bandits? Facing the old man's inquiry, the young man lying in a pool of blood moved a finger slightly. Upon seeing this, the leader softly said, My name is Moritonio, a traveling performer. And you? The red-haired youth in the pool of blood stiffly twitched his neck, revealing a face with sharp features and a somewhat charming demeanor. Uttering inaudible sounds, he murmured, S. Soko. Soko, I got it, the leader nodded reaching out to lift the injured youth. Witnessing this, the members inside the caravan were dissatisfied with the leader's decision. Some even cast hostile glances towards Soko. However, there was one exception. That was a young man who appeared to be close in age to Soko, with a black buzz cut and a few freckles on his cheeks. He stared at Soko in the leader's arms with a look of fear. As if he had seen a venomous snake or fierce beast. It's actually him. Qin Feng's throat involuntarily rolled, as the scene unfolding before him brought a rush of memories flooding back. Qin Feng was his name in his past life, in this life, he was called Long. He was a transmigrator. Having just arrived less than half a month ago. Upon opening his eyes, he found himself in this circus troupe. And after some time getting to know it, he also realized. He had arrived in the world of hunters. Hunter x Hunter. A classic anime he had loved in his past life. Nevertheless, he didn't dwell on it too much, being reborn was always a good thing. Moreover, as a transmigrator, he was very familiar with the plot of Hunter x Hunter. This world is extremely dangerous. But for an ordinary person to live a peaceful life isn't too difficult. Although he was currently just a member of a circus troupe, living a nomadic life. Using the foresight of the plot information at least could elevate his achievements above those of ordinary people in the future. And what he needed to do now was. Diligently train and strive to become a hunter as soon as possible. However, the unexpected scene before him made Long feel uneasy. With Soko's arrival, sealed memories began to resurface. The circus troupe he was in wasn't just a group of ordinary entertainers. They weren't just a bunch of common artists. They were the incubators that nurtured Soko, this aberrant and madman. This story didn't come from the pen of an old thief. It was from another very famous anime from his past life, the one by the author of Tokyo Ghoul. Specifically drawn for the character Soko. Bearing the stamp of approval and recognition from Ishida Sway, the creator. Because this storyline does not belong to the original Hunter x Hunter work, Qin Feng hadn't paid much attention to it. However, now, with Soko's appearance, he realized that there was a bit of a problem. To think that he. Long's heart was filled with mixed emotions. The only comforting thing was that Soko, this guy, wasn't an in-user. Not as terrifying as in the previous world. Long, take care of him for a bit. Of all the luck, the leader walked towards him carrying Soko, giving the order. Yes. Although reluctant, Long had no choice but to comply. He took Soko and carried him into the carriage. Finding a person by the roadside. For everyone else, it was just a minor incident, at most a few arguments with the leader, then the caravan would once again head towards its destination. This circus. I remember. The leader seems to be a nin user as well, and also a notorious serial killer in the York New Continent, who met his end at the hands of Soko. Soko's nin ability, a fragile illusion, was also something he learned from Moritonio. 
Inside the carriage, Long dipped a towel in water, helped Soko remove his blood-stained clothes, and then wiped his body clean. His thoughts, however, were on the leader. Originally, I thought this was just an ordinary circus troupe, that as long as I saved up enough money and laid a good foundation, I could find a reason to leave on my own. But unexpectedly, Long squinted his eyes, remembering that the leader seemed to teach every member in practice. Unfortunately, only one girl, Abaki, had learned it, while the rest lacked the aptitude. Long felt a bit uneasy. He wasn't sure if he could master Nen. Nen was the key measure of a hunter's strength. Only by becoming a Nen user could one truly step into the threshold of being a hunter. His past self had joined a circus troupe only a few months ago, not much earlier than Soko. He was a wanderer, picked up just like Soko, with a similar background. So far, the leader hadn't shown any intention of teaching him Nen practice. Soko. As Long looked down at the young man lying unconscious beside him, an evil thought flashed through his mind. What if? What if he killed Soko now? Would that mean the famous fruit grower would exit the stage early? Would there be fewer complications in the future? No, this guy is one of the main characters. If he dies, the storyline will become chaotic and change. My only advantage would be lost. Besides, currently, our relationship is that of strangers. There is no reason or need to kill him. Quickly, Long dismissed this thought. Congratulations, host, for officially establishing communication with a plot character. Your path to growth has now begun. Please strive to become the supreme will in this world. The host's template has been created, auxiliary functions are being loaded. Suddenly, a mechanical voice resounded in Long's mind, leaving him momentarily stunned. A virtual screen materialized before his eyes, displaying a data panel showing his personal body attributes and growth direction. Ha! Huh. Long's expression lit up with joy. Personal stats simply provided him with a clear understanding of his own abilities. However, the most practical aspect was the system's auxiliary functions. The detailed instructions offered many training methods and means most suitable for his current situation, as well as suggestions for his growth direction, preventing him from taking many wrong paths. It was somewhat like having an online tutor. For instance, as an ordinary person now, his first step should be to strengthen his physical body, practice martial arts, and gain combat experience. The system conveniently laid out a training plan and various methods for cultivation. Mostly traditional martial arts, this system's database must be based on the knowledge from my past life experiences. Long quickly realized this. He chose to trust the vast data. After all, having intelligent artificial assistance was better than stumbling blindly on his own. <sighs> At that moment, a laugh startled Long awake. Glancing down, Long discovered that Soko, lying in the car, had already opened his eyes at some point. In the narrow slits of his eyes, there shimmered an unpredictable light. Long was surprised because he feared that Soko might see his system screen. However, his concerns were quickly dispelled as he noted that Soko seemed, seemed unable to see the panel. Is it impolite to keep staring at me like this? Soko's tone was playful, with a hint of a smile. Realizing the misunderstanding, Long calmed his mind. Due to the angle of sight, he had actually been looking at the system panel the whole time. But from Soko's perspective, this young man, with black hair, about the same age as himself, had been silently watching him without saying a word. As the one who took care of you, shouldn't you express some gratitude first? Soko's gaze fixed on him. Long composed himself and replied with a sarcastic tone. How do you want me to express my gratitude? A slight curve formed at the corner of Soko's mouth his eyes beneath the bangs revealing an ambiguous intent. Remember this favor for now, I'll decide how to thank you later. After saying this, Long unceremoniously tossed a towel at Soko. Since you're awake, clean yourself up. With that, he turned to jump off the car. Casting a sidelong glance at the people outside the carriage, Long remarked, Just a reminder, the situation in this circus isn't great. 
Being a wild dog picked up by the leader from the roadside only adds to the burden on the troop. If you want to stay here, try to maintain good relations with them. You really are heartless, Soko sighed lightly as Long ignored him and moved on. Tsk, Long clicked his tongue. He truly couldn't get along with Soko, and there was no fondness between them. At such a young age, Long could already sense a hint of darkness in Soko's demeanor. Afterward, Long leaped out of the carriage. Soko propped himself up with his arm, using a damp towel to clean himself. Then, resting his chin on his hand, his eyes peered through the carriage door, scanning the figures of everyone in the troop, as if scrutinizing, observing, and perhaps gathering something. End of this chapter. Yeah.